prepared the final part of the series, Battles of the Bloodline. We've spoken about, you know, how that whole thing came up. Battles of the Bloodline, how they can manifest. We've spoken about how even Jesus, our Lord, both experience, you know, and partook in, in certain battles of the bloodline. And then we are coming to remedies now. We are coming to how to deal with them, actually. And um, we are starting with one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And that is um, a scripture in John, actually. As a scripture in John. And um, that is John, John's gospel, I mean. Chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, and I quote, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then there's a column, which means that the 13 is explaining what the 12 is saying. And that the 13 is explaining what the 12 is saying, sorry. And what is the 13 saying? which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You see, all of the limitations I have talked about, all the battles that are brought upon us because of where we come from, what we look like, whose family we belong to, all of these things are decisions that are taken by the will of man are taken because of flesh, you know, are taken because of blood. And it's all because of where we were born. But the Bible says that one of the unique things about salvation, being born again, and why everybody needs it, and I mean everybody needs it, is because being born again, you need to take on the name above all name, the name of Jesus the Christ. Jesus of Nazareth, you know, Jesus by reason of his power has now exalted Nazareth, one of the most famous towns in the whole world now. The town that was once in backward was not known. But let me explain something and see how prejudice can blind us to what the truth is. Is that what many people do nowadays? There are many, many inventions. In fact, the internet would not work, but for some work that was done by by, um, by Nigerian American, by uh, one of the Ghanaian scientists, Fibrotics and the rest, and other people who pioneered seem to do internet and the rest, you know, black American scientists. The, the world as we have it, contrary to the popular opinion, is a contribution from people of all races. But because when people see something is made in the USA, or made in Britain, they assume oh, the, the dominant color there is not made it, and none of the minorities. We know that could be further from the truth. In the same way, Nathaniel taught Jesus actually healed from Nazareth. He did not know that Jesus actually, Jesus's real hometown was actually in Bethlehem, was in Judah. He, he actually, he is actually of the royal line of David. If he knew all of those facts together, he would not be concluding the way he was concluding before even meeting him. In the same we. The fact that somebody is of a certain color, is of a certain education, is of a certain, of a certain town, of a certain height, of a certain gender, does not mean the person can be tagged in a particular manner. Because all of those things have nothing to do with what is somebody's head, somebody's heart, what a person has been exposed to. And that's what we call racial profiling. You know, that's what we call prejudice. So, here, the Bible is saying any kind of prejudice that you can place on anybody, the name Jesus is higher than it. And that name Jesus takes us right from any prejudice, any box, any box that anybody has placed us in and place us in a place which is far beyond the flesh, far beyond any human will or any human decision. So no matter what you decide, it doesn't affect me because I'm a child of God. And I'm not just a child of God. I'm all, I haven't been with Christ and belong to Christ. I have become 
part of the seed of Abraham. I have become part of the spiritual seed of Abraham. I might not be Abraham's physical descendant, but by believing on his descendant, the seed of Abraham, who is Christ, and becoming like Christ, be a co-heir with him. I have also become a spiritual seed of Abraham. So that is what this one is saying. It's a profound statement in scripture. And many people just skip over it because it's a very popular scripture for evangelism. But it has such, it's packed with so much power. It's packed with so much when it comes to, comes to prejudice, when it comes to bloodline limitation. It says there's no limitation in your bloodline. There's none, not, not because of where you were born, not because of which blood you carry. So it cancels every genetic predisposition. Every you know, genetic predisposition is cancelled. It, it, it cancels the fact that you were born of a man and woman, therefore, because the Adamic sin runs through you, it, it takes you out of the Adamic sin and reinstates you as, 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 the, the, as the person that Adam was before he said, you know, for all I've said, I'm falling short. It brings you out of falling short into that level where you are now a son of the living God. And whatever man has a will, decided, thought of, no longer affects you. It doesn't matter what they want to call you, what, what they want to send you to, where, where they send you to, who they send you to, you know, for what reason they send you to, whoever they send you to. Send you to. It doesn't matter what will anybody has first concerning you. It will not work because you are born of God and no longer of a man. It has nothing to do with your color. What your height, what your weight, or anything is no of the will of the flesh. Nothing flesh can limit you any longer, can hold you down any longer, can determine your capacity any longer because you are born of God. Your birth was not by any man's decision, by any man's marriage, by any man's meeting of any woman. Your birth is orchestrated and consummated by the Holy Ghost, your bed is of God. So whatever you think you carry, you no longer carry it because the Bible says that you're no longer born of a man. So stop saying that my family, that which family is, are you referring to God's family or your family? Because now God's family is your family. You're part of the commonwealth of Israel. You are part of the spiritual child children of, of, of God. Your family now is God's family. So stop talking about the human family that you have been removed from by reason of your birth. You've been translated from by reason of your, of your birth. You've been moved from onto life. And now you belong to the God family. And the life you now have is the God kind of life, the Zoe life. You no longer have the just human life that was for a certain tribe, that was for a certain period, that was at, at a particular location, no. You were elevated above all that. And you now have the very life of God, the Zoe life. Because of that, anything that your bloodline, that the parents that you had, any negative thing that the, your bloodline or the parents that you had, or because of the location you were born, or because of anybody's decision to marry your mother or to marry your father has brought about, because of anybody's decision whether to allow the marriage or not to allow the marriage has brought about. In the will of anybody, whatever it has brought upon your life, the Bible says that now that you are born of God, you can decide by the power of God to let that thing cease in your life because it no longer has the basis to, to continue in your life. Because all the basis they had was because of your lineage, was because of blood, was because of who gave birth to you, was because of where you were born, was because of a certain color you had, a certain personality you had, a certain appearance you had. Now all of those things have been taken away. Now you are born of God. God has no prejudice. God has no color. God has no place he comes from. God did not, is not there because of any human decision. Therefore, all of these things have no basis in their seeds. I wanted to share with me Every negative thing that is in my life because of my physical, physical origin or physical birth, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah, say it now. Anything that has come about because 
or my physical person or my physical birth or where I was born. Now that I'm in the household of God, I cancel all of that and I reject them all in the name of Jesus. I reject hereditary sicknesses. I reject family sickness. I reject family cancers. I reject family poverty. I reject family behavior, negative behavior. I reject any family limitation that will place upon them because I'm no longer under any family in the flesh, but I'm in the family of God. Hallelujah. And this is completely true. Keep confessing it till it manifests in your spirit and begins to bear fruit in your flesh in Jesus' name. So that is what first, uh, that's what John Gospel 1, 12 and 13 is saying. It's not just saying that we are born again. It's saying we have been completely liberated from every physical limitation by reason of birth, by reason of origin, by reason of parentage or by reason of any decision somebody has taken about us and our family. All of those things have been cancelled. They are null and void. It no longer applies to our life. We must insist on it, and we must. Whenever we go to any place and they tell us, because your mother has this, you can have that. Because your father has it, you must let them know that indeed in your spirit, you might have been physically been born by somebody, but now you have been spiritually been birthed by God himself. Therefore, you will not allow the physical limitations of your physical birth to overcome this, the spiritual potentials of your spiritual birth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So there's another one that is quite great. Yeah, the, um, and I love that scripture. That's, it's talking about the Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And it says something interesting here. It says that um, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Yes, I am not. Neither am I. Uh, because it is, it, it, it is the only thing that has the power to see the Jew and the Greek. Some persons also send the Gentile. You know, these two people couldn't have been further apart. The Jew was steep in religion, steep in God, steep in what God could do, and the rest. The Greek were more like the modern day scientists who think they know everything, and if everything cannot be explained by them, then that, that thing does not make sense, and the rest. That is how the Greek were. The Greek seek for knowledge, and the rest. You know, and then the Jews seek for science, actually. So, but then the gospel, whether you are learned or not learned, whether you are professor or not professor, or you're, whatever you are, whoever you are, the gospel can touch you. The gospel can meet you at your point of view and bring you into sonship in Christ Jesus. And, and that power of the gospel is something that is inexplainable to many people. The gospel has power beyond what well, has power to reach both the religious and the scientific because it's, it's power that goes beyond reasoning it's power that goes beyond religion it's power that can reach into the deep recesses of our heart and meet our very needs right there and there it's, it's power that when we encounter it breaks all the physical limitations we set about ourselves all the the, 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 the physical mood and the other skeleton we build around our heart, it melts it away and touches us at the point of our need. That is the power of the gospel. It, it, it brings the desire change and changes the criminal and makes him a saint. It is the gospel that can send, that can embolden people for them to travel into the jungle to go and minister to cannibals. No, no motivation to let somebody do that without, even if you want the soldier to do that, you have to go, you will go with a gun and go with a, a, a force that can protect him. But here we have innocent people. They just didn't go there. They went there with their children, right from the United States of America into a jungle in Papua New Guinea. It's only the gospel, it's only the power of the gospel that can make a man do that with his family. He didn't even go alone and then send a family leader. He went with all the entire family to that place in the middle of the jungle to minister to them. Only the Lord can do this in Jesus. And only the power of the gospel can achieve this. So the remedy of all the limitations that have been placed on the bloodline by choice, by human decision, by lineage, by change and everything 
I dealt with when we become born again. Then we take on the name above our name, and then all of these things are then worked on if only we allow them to our benefit. Now it says again here, another scripture I love even in conclusion. It says that um, we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's, it's, it's such a profound scripture that I want us to go into it. Let's go into it. I think uh, let's all go together. Please open your Bible to Galatians, Galatians chapter um, 3, verse 26 to 29. Galatians 3, you know, and then look at the scripture, so sweet. Galatians 3, 26, 29, King James Version. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. These days are not even explanation. In other words, whatever you look like, whatever ritual you were part of, it is not necessary. Because now the only way to know Christ is not by some gymnastics, by some incantations, or by some language you need to speak. You don't need to know Arabic to know Jesus. You don't need to know Hebrew. You only need to know him by faith. Believe what the Bible says he is and accept it. That's all you need to do. And when you do that, you then wear Christ like a designer wear. You know, as far as you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You, 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 once you get into baptism, it's like you have been immersed in Christ and, and you, you come out of the water wearing Christ. The 28 says, there's neither, once you do that, once you wear Christ, all the bloodline limitations are gone. All the appearance limitations are gone. All the where do you come from limitations are gone. All the who are your parents limitations are gone. Now, according to 28, he says, then when that happens, there is neither Jew nor Greek. The one, the one sixteen thing we talked about, that the, the gospel say both the Jew and Greek. Once you are saved, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. See, when I hear people making noise about feminism, it makes this funny. Before there was feminism, the Bible has already said it, that once you become a child of God, a son of God, there's nothing like female, male any longer. More sons of God are sons of God, whether they female or male. And clearly that scripture is here in Galatians 3, 28 that there was neither female nor male. So few male Christians are not inferior to male Christians. You know, it is only in the context of marriage that the Bible says that because a man was made first, the man should lead and the wife should assist him in the leadership. That is why every woman is given a chance to choose her leader, her husband, by herself. So clearly, and in those days, who, who, how dare you compare a free bone to a, you know, to someone who was born as a slave? But the Bible says in that generation where they said they, they didn't even say that at the point in time there was about seven slaves to to one uh, free bone. You know, it was such a major part of the economic ar architecture of the of the place that it was scandalous to say the least. I mean, completely unthinkable for anybody to say that both bones and free, uh, free people were the same. No, no. But here the scripture is boldly declaring that, actually. And then also saying um, there's neither Jew nor Greek. The Jews did, needed to make sure they were not considered as Greek because the Greek were work, worshipping the pantheon of, of, of idols, even though they were intellectuals. So the, the Jew did not want to be Greek. Neither the Greek want to be Jew because the Greek talk they were more sophisticated and more knowledgeable. But the Bible says no matter who you are, no matter your background, once you put on Christ, all that background is gone and Christ is the one who is supreme in Jesus' name. And by so doing, that seed of Abraham, Christ that, that was to come, then you have also become joined as with that seed and therefore you have also become Abraham's seed. That is all the scripture is saying. It's such a profound thing. Brother, sister, I don't know what you've been told. People have used your color, where you come from. You hear people say, though, you know, black man or black sense. You hear people say all kinds of things. 
when I had it from a black man in a book, all kinds of prejudices, all kinds of all kinds of insults, all kinds of innuendos and ideas of criminality, even when you have not done anything, it's assumed you would, you know, and all of those things. But the Bible says, in spite of all of those negativities of the bloodline, all of those battles of the bloodline that we fight as people of color, as people from Africa, as people from poor neighborhoods, as people from um, our married homes, as, as people who have certain addiction, as people who have certain orientations in the world, the Bible is showing that if you avail ourselves, God is going to bring us to sanction. And there will no longer be any limitation because you are male or female or because you are born or even free or because you are a Jew or even a Greek. The Christ that you are put on will be the only person that you will be needed to serve. And once you do that, you, once you become Christ, then obviously you have also become that seed of Abraham who is Christ from whom Every blessing comes in the name of Jesus. Even as you watch, if you are able to watch all these three series, you've seen that there's no opportunity again for you to say that. As for my family, there are witches there. As for my family, there's evil there. As for my family, there's that and that there. Today, you'll be made to understand that your family is the family of God himself. The family you belong to is God's family. And God is the head of that family. There are no witches in God's family. There's no evil in God's family. So if there's evil happening, it means you should move from that your own family that you are still there into God's family. Move yourself there by prayer. And let every demon, let every witch, let every wizard, let me every sorcerer, every enchanter in your family. Let every familiar spirit know that you are no longer with your physical blood line family. But your blood line is now true. Um, Abraham if to God. God is your father. He has adopted you. Therefore, if you see associated with, with the baggages of your physical father, even in the name of Jesus, let them be aware that since God is your father, God has sent his protection around you. And anybody who would dare try you or anything that belongs to you will have to face the wrath of the cherubim who bear the flaming sword, even in the name of Jesus. May any evil plan against you not succeed. May the Lord squash any evil plans of the enemy concerning you. May you shine forever. May you cut down your enemies. May you cut down to no one stand, standing, even in the name of you. May you prevail against your enemy, even as you take your stand. I'm talking about enemies in the spirit. I'm talking about enemies who have familiar spirit. Even in the name of Jesus, I pray that let no physical limitation of ours determine our destiny. Let our destiny be determined by your word alone, Jesus. Let our destinies be determined by your word alone, Jesus. Not by our families, not by ourselves, not by our physical weakness or strength. Let everything that happens to us from now on happen to us because you said they can. You said they should. Happy to have because you have determined it for our life. You will not submit to anything of our bloodline because our bloodline is now a bloodline that is traced even unto God Himself. And in God, there is no variableness, there is no shadow of turning. I refuse to carry a family disease because God has no disease. I refuse to carry a family limitation because God has no limitation. I refuse to carry a bad family behavior, because God has no bad family behavior. I refuse to carry poverty, because God has no poverty within him in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to our three series of the Battles of the Bloodline. Hopefully, if God gives us time, we may turn it into a book and write about it. We need to stop believing only bad things can happen to us. Once we are in Christ, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift come from the Father above. So now we should believe that one too. I believe that there are angels of God upon our life 24-7. God bless you for being here. And God bless you for loving God. God bless.